Might as well. <laughs> the valve stayed open. This is part five of this series, and if you haven't seen the others, make sure you go back and check it out. And here are the four front uh, wheel cylinders. As you see in this video, there's you know two on each each uh, drum, and then I've got new brake hoses here, new brake fluid new wheel seals. We've already checked the bearings, they're in great shape. Uh, we just need to grease them and put them back in. I got, uh, for bearing grease, I'm using uh, Lucas Red Tacky, uh, Red red uh, red and Tacky. Guys, we're not uh, sponsored by Super Clean, but I, I like this stuff right here. This absorbs so much more than regular old floor absorbent does. You can just put a little of this down and it will actually uh, take up just probably three times as much as a normal absorbent does. And you know what I'm gonna do? I, uh, I'm gonna spill some stuff. So I don't know, I don't see any marks on some of the old trucks. Your left side and your right side uh, lug nuts would go different directions. You had a left lug nut and a right lug nut because you wanted the lug nut to turn over in the same direction that the, the wheel was rotating. This one just seems to be righty tighty, lefty loosey. But on your big truck, sometimes that's not the case. I wish I had a new impact gun. Can I have a new impact gun? My wife said, go, you hear that guys? Look, I got it on tape. She said, go, go. That's how old I am. I said, I got it on tape. So on these old trucks, what you got is, ooh, look at that grease. You get in there and get them a shot of that. It ain't got a, it ain't got a gasket on it. How about that? I don't make them like that no more. I don't know if you guys know this, but these old carter pins here, back in the day, now they're made out of cheap metal. Back in the day, they were made out of high strength steel and they would last for years. And that thing here is 50 years old and it's still made out of good solid metal that you can bend and rebend and not break off. So it's very important when you're doing these that you do one side at a time or keep your bearings separated. You don't want to mix bearings up. So if the bearing here, if you got two bearings that are same on inner and outer, you want to make sure that you keep them separated and they go back in the race they come out of because they wear into the races. See what? There's no sign of there's no sign of ugliness in here. Everything looks so just wiggle it up and down. That'll pop your outside bearing out. Just look at that. Look at there, pristine as a baby's butt. So in the army, I had privates, and I could say, "Hey, go get me a go get me a five eight inch wrench." They run over and get me a five eight inch wrench. I never had to move. Now I gotta go get my own wrench. What's up with that? Good news is brakes look really good. Not a 
gonna find that dude wherever it went. The brakes look really good. I got no problems with the brakes. Now these old brakes here, something to keep in mind, is these brakes are made out of asbestos and you don't want to go crazy like blowing this stuff around. Uh, this has got a lot of oil in it so it's falling straight to the ground. I don't feel like I'm in any, any danger with my lungs. Uh, but don't get an air hose out here and go crazy with this kind of stuff because these old brakes have asbestos in them. So use liquids to rinse it down and not get this in the air. So what I'm gonna do, since I've already got brand new brake lines, I'm just gonna cut these off to save time. My biggest problem right now is I gotta get these wheel cylinders off uh, look at that good brand new. That's out. We were bleeding it the other day, so it's still got good looking fluid coming out. So I need to find these wheel cylinders, and these wheel cylinders are odd. So I need to find them. I had to take these off, get the numbers off of them so I can get the right ones. Yeah, that's gotta be good. Oh yeah, that's good. That's quality right there, heck yeah. Look at that. Nothing wrong with that. Makes me want to go steady down the road. You can tell you shiny boots before. Yep, three, three, six, eight. Here. And let's see over here on this side, it says Wagner and FE3068. So that's probably gonna be my part number. All right, we're back over here at the shop. Uh, so one of the wheel studs were, were broke off, so I was gonna put a new one on. And in the process of knocking this one out, I missed and hit one of the good ones. So I went ahead and beat one of the good ones out too, because I, I just went right down the side of the thread. So I got two new ones. Uh, the only drawback to the new ones are that they are a little bit longer, uh, but it won't matter. Just- Let me see again. Hold them together beside each other. All right, so they're, they're the same stud, just one's a little bit, the threads are a little bit longer on one. It's not gonna matter anything. So we're gonna put these two new studs in, and it's basically like that right here. Don't hurt to go ahead and spray the holes a little bit, and then uh, beat these down in there. Hey, what about the glasses? Yeah, so I don't have any safety glasses with me. I'm at somebody else's shop, so sunglasses is what I got. Well, these are actually work glasses, but they're, they're shaded, but it's still better than getting a shard of metal in your eye. All right, that's one in. Drop that one in, we'll start the job. Start going at it. All right, sometimes I'm not as safe as I could be, but when you guys are using steel punches or brass drills or whatever, and you're hammering on them, you gotta make sure that you're wearing safety glasses because what happens are, sometimes you can hit with such force, the little shard of metal will shoot out, break off and shoot out. It's literally like a bullet coming out of the gun. I've seen people's eyes put out and pieces of shards of metal sticking in people's arms and like it literally will break the skin and go in the muscle. So it's no joke. Anyway, it's a messy job right here. So I'm gonna take these out and throw them in the parts cleaner. Let them clean up for a while. Now I said the other day that I checked the bearings. I didn't check these bearings because obviously the seal was still in. Have no reason to believe that they're not good though. And uh, just looking at the races here, they look good. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Bearings are still smooth. Well, they still make good bearings, but this right here is this top notch stuff right here. Back 
That's how strong that is. Just broke the boat off. Not a good start. I didn't think it'd be that. I didn't think it'd be that strong. Guess maybe hinting Hercules. Well, I gotta find the boat you now. I broke one, and I gotta get this boat out of there. Should be no issue. Whenever this broke broke off, it should have released. All right, so let me tell you what I did. So we got the new wheel cylinder, and also I got this new Hercules. Uh, let's see if I can get you. I got this new Hercules impact driver, and kind of filling it out. I know kind of the torques on my other impact driver. Well, this is a good solid boat. You can see that there's no uh, old. Rust, this is not a broken boat. It twisted that boat off like it was nobody's business. Be still? Yes. Anyway, long story short, uh, you can see it broke off in there. There's no big deal. I just gotta get a drill and extract that out. I got other ones, I got other wheel cylinders on hand, so I'm just moving on your home and put it on. So, note to you guys, you get this Hercules driver, it's dude strong. kit but I'll tell you one thing about these the quality of steel on that is not like what you get today last last lock all right all right so I got my got a bearing packer and I run off and left the, the adapter at home so it's back to the old-fashioned way that's good come on yeah so some people don't do this, but I fill my hubs with grease. So what happens is, as these things get hot, that grease turns to a liquid. And then it re eases back out. Make sure the bearings stay. So I don't go crazy with it, but I want enough in there that I'm never gonna be without grease. Yeah. The art of packing a bearing. You might've packed a bearing before, ain't you? One or two? Old man down the road showed me how to pack bearings years ago. Now I just think everybody knows how to do it. But a lot of people don't. They just rub grease around on it and call it. It's good. Ah, that ain't nothing to it. It's just patience. See where I'm pushing that grease through? Yeah, it's just. Yes, that blood. Well, this is red tacky. Lucas red tacky grease. That's some good grease. I don't know, he was close, but the company wasn't. Oh, I thought he was like, like Troy Huntington or some of that area. I can't remember what was very close to us. Come here, give me a kiss. No. Mm -hmm. no. There is a seal installer. I don't have nothing this big. So this is how we used to do it out in the field. You just, there's art to it. You find the pivot point. You just learn, it's a skill, you learn. a little skill there. You always want to hit flat face too so you're not denting, denting top of your seals. Well, I can have a life too. Baby, I am your life. What are you talking about? <laughs> what, on these old bearings like this, the best way to do is to rotate that bearing as you're turning the nut. What you're doing, you're causing the causing that bearing to seat. You're just going to turn it until it gets tight. If you can, when it stops, you don't want to put no real pressure on this. So when it stops, like say such, 
Look at that. Too much. Uh, you don't want it go where it just, you can't turn it anymore. You just want to go like where it's tight and then back off. But all the time you're doing that, you're, you're re, you keep turning that drum so that it seats. You're seating those bearings. That's what we call it, seating the bearings. Yep, so now I've got to a point right here, it's so tight. I don't think I can get my, my key through right now. Let's see. The key goes basically crossways. So I don't believe I'm gonna be able to get a key through right here. Maybe, be close. No. So when you can't get the key through, you don't tighten it more. You back it off until you can get the key through. Bearings do not have to be uh, super tight for them to work. Also make sure you keep your, your pliers clean because you don't want this in the, in the bearings. So if you can turn it a little bit more, I can't, it's too tight. So what I'm gonna do is turn back till the first hole lines up for the, for the pin. That's as simple as it gets. And then once the hole lines up, just push it through, turn it. So we got this here. That dude ain't going nowhere. Here is another problem. I had this perm tape, it broke. So we're gonna have to improvise. Improvise, whoa! <laughs> the valve stayed open. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just said I need to get a new can. I think that'll be enough. Thanks, too. I believe that's gonna be enough. Well, I couldn't, that couldn't happen no better. So perm -techs, work on your little valve system. Shave yourself with that stuff in your hands. Yeah, this is like man glitter on steroids. You get this RTV silicone on your hands and you get it on everything. You'd be two days later you'd be looking around and there'd be something with silicone that you touched and you didn't know. So I got a handful of it. But you put the rest in an empty box? It it hardens like rubber like a basketball. But not right away. Uh, within an hour. Yeah, but in case you need some more. I mean I don't I won't need any more today. This is gonna make the video right here, I'm telling you. Uh, yes. Kinda of reminds me of when I, wait, never mind. So this is what's supposed to look like here. And it looks like somebody literally has welded a brake line together. And I don't know if this is gonna screw out or not. Okay, word. I'm on looking for these, uh, and you can't find them. They're hard to find. Look at how rusted up this one is. This one's been replaced at some point. This dude here is original, ain't no doubt about it. Probably saw all the other things, but we can make it work. We still got plenty of life left in it. All right, so this is what's going on. You got the new brake line that comes from the truck to the wheel, and it goes through this fitting here, these banjo fittings, which goes into the back of the wheel cylinders, and then it runs brake fluid from the top wheel cylinder around to the other wheel cylinder. So I'm replacing all of these lines. Uh, so I need to go get metal lines to replace these. So we're at a stopping point right now. Huh, may not even have to. Look at there. Just enough thread with a center punch that I didn't even need to extract, use the extractor. So what I'm doing is just going around, tapping it on the edges. Look there. We're nowhere, nowhere near that bad. All right, so the. Wheel cylinders, we got it wrong. It's just part of doing business. You can get mad and throw things and be ugly. But at the end of the day, the only thing gonna fix it is research.
All right, the last time you've seen us for you, which is a couple of seconds ago, for us it's been several days. Uh, the wheel cylinder that we got in, first off, we ordered, we ordered the wheel cylinders and it only showed one part number for the wheel cylinders. And the reality is there is a left and a right wheel cylinder. Uh, th these aim this direction and the other ones are just reversed. And uh, anyway, long story short, uh, one of the wheel cylinders we got in, uh, it was defective. It didn't have any threads cut in it. Well, this one's in good shape. Uh, now we have the, the two wheel cylinders we need and we'll get back and get started. We've got new bolts for each one of these. And the reason being is, is a, this particular wheel cylinder here, both of these, one bolt was missing, one was broke off. And the only thing that was holding it on was the, the big one. Uh, and that was all that was holding it on and it was loose. So it was about to come loose. So we put, we bought all new hardened bolts. Uh, so we have the right type bolts on hand. All right, before we put the brake drum on and put the, you know, repack the wheel bearings, I'm gonna go ahead and put the new uh, brake lines on the back. You can see we cut the, the brake lines here. Plus, there's these, these uh, brake fittings here that we have to run from one wheel cylinder to the other on the back. And uh, we just wanted to get a, you know, we wanted a new one so that it would hold up. The ones that were in there were really, really deteriorated. So, brakes are important. They are vintage. Yeah. Very vintage. <laughs> this is what I got going on. I had to make a brake line, metal brake line, go in down here and come around to the, this side. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. And this is where the brake line goes from the truck in. Now there originally was a banjo boat system, but the way the brake lines are, th or mean the uh, threaded portion of these wheel cylinders are, they will not take the banjo boats. Uh, they're made for a brake like a brake line to be screwed into it and it just won't work so this is this is my the only fix that i feel comfortable with I and mean, brakes there is no forgiveness you have to do right so uh, i run the brake line directly into the top wheel cylinder's bleeder so actually i run this brake line in the top wheel cylinder of the bleeder so whenever i put brake fluid through it it's going to push the air out here down to the bottom wheel cylinder you can see here that this is at the this bleeder is at the top of the wheel cylinder. So it's going to push air in here, and it will still be at the top. So the air still will be pushed out. It's just not ideal, not what I really like to do. But uh, there's really no other option. I mean, there is just nothing here to work with, and the parts like getting new parts is just not going to happen. And finding the right wheel cylinders at this late stage in the game, I just don't know that I can because I process the part numbers it was a direct swap part number and uh, it just didn't work different 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 all right so here is the brake line now this the brake line should have a square nut on it and it should come right through and it broke free so we got to break the brake line free take it loose and then we'll take the big nut off that holds that on All right, so what we got going on here is we've had to uh, finagle because the parts are just not available. But this is the actual brake line that they call for on the truck. And you can see it's pretty tight right here. And I understand that the wheel is all the way in the down position right now. But uh, when you turn it to the right, it is completely, it's, it, it's taunt. And that's no good because even as you're driving, this axle is going to go up and down. So we're going to have to re, you know, we just spent a, a good 30 minutes putting this, this line on, and now we're going to have to go take it off and find a longer line because this is, that's not going to cut it. It's not safe. Hey, I really appreciate you guys watching the channel. Uh, we're going to call this a number four video. So this is be the fourth one in our series. We're going to stop right here. We are to the point that we could literally put the wheels on this truck and roll it out of the shop if needs, actually drive it out the shop. It don't got no brakes other than the parking brake, but we could actually get this thing out the door if we had to. So we have the front wheels back on it. 
What we're going to do now is go ahead and pull these that new brake line we just put on off and go to the parts house and see what we can come up with. Hey guys, I want to really tell you I appreciate you watching our channel and I appreciate you subscribing to our channel. If you like what we do, hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon. That'll let you know when another uh, video comes out. God bless and have a great day.